Smoke City, cuz! Smoke City! Yeah! 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 Nice little flipping fish. He came out on the edge of the grass in order to hit that. He wasn't even if you saw it. So we ditched the offshore for a little bit, come back shallow. That was on a Dobbin Sierra, it's a 766 flip. Jake actually put an additional guide on the bottom. It's a flipping rod, so Dobbin's designs it so you can actually grab the line a little easier with it, all this room. I didn't enjoy it. I like this rod for swim baits as well, so you need it for things like that. It's an excellent rod to pitch a grass. Lighter cover, definitely not getting into too thick of stuff. I'm only flipping a a half ounce weight. Nonetheless, this rod's awesome. It loads up real nice, this type of fishing. Got down to 811, that loose, and this 50 pound braid. I like the lighter braid. This grass, it's real manageable. I know Eric Tilson's probably watching this, laughing at me. Yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, it's just what I'm comfortable. And then up to like 65 with heavier weights. All right, what is happening, y'all? Don't mind the mess that we got going on back here. Got a lot of tackle organization going on. But I kinda wanted to stop this video and just kinda Put a little tidbit in on here. Obviously the beard and everything. This video is actually from March. Make a long story short, my camera and the hard drive on my computer both decided they wanted to crap out at the same time. Hence why the YouTube videos were a little slow there for a while. Now when I got the new hard drive in, I was actually able to back up through a buddy of mine. I was actually able to back up my old hard drive onto an external hard drive and then take the external hard drive and download all that stuff onto my new hard drive. So it all kind of worked out, you know, relatively well. So anyways, I found this footage. I was excited to upload because it was pretty cool, man. Like I literally sat there, told Jake, hey, watch this next flip. Like we need to be flipping. Flipped in there, caught a fish, literally first flip as you saw. And you know, I got to talking and I've learned a lot over the, probably the last like three years of just flipping and pitching, a lot of tips and tricks and you know, stuff from other guys and been fortunate enough to spend some time in a boat with some really good guys that are, have a lot of skill and are real hammers at flipping and pitching for Florida bass specifically. So I want to just go over the three rods that I use in different flipping and pitching scenarios and kind of things that I run into as kind of like a modest guy who flips and pitches. I mean, you know, being down here in Florida, you know, we, we hit these, these shallow fish a lot. We've got a lot of the shoreline cover to be able to do that type of fishing year round. Without further ado, we'll kind of get right into it. Main rod that I use, and I showed it to you there in the video. This is a Dobbin Sierra series. It's a 766, they call it a flipping stick. Now what I did is, who I was fishing with is Jake over there at Impact Rods. I actually had him put another guide here in between my reel seat and the top guide. This rod is built to flip, literally. So it, it kind of, it lacks that last guide so you're able to pull the line easier coming off the rod blank there. Be able to flip a lot easier and quicker and have a lot more line to play with when you're making decent flip blanks. So it's a really, really good swim bait rod. I love fishing swim baits, like soft swim baits and ripping fish through shallow cover. Uh, so I was using it for a while for that. And then I decided, you know, I need like something for a lighter flip and pigeon. So I use this from everything to about, uh, 3 16th to about three quarter ounce weights. And this is kind of the setup I use for light grass, um, timber maybe, lighter lily pads, and dock flipping. I've got a loose custom SLP speed spool on there, and I got 50 pound Suffix 832 braid. It's a seven foot six rod, six power, so it's got a lot of backbone, ton of ripping action. You're able to rip fish out a decent you know, amount of cover. But you want something a little heavier than this when you start getting into the heavier stuff. You know, you might get into really heavy lily pads mixed with like hyacinth, mixed with like eelgrass. Might not defeat those fish when they get tucked in and start bringing up all those hyacinths. So you want something that really drives the hook a little harder. So that's kind of like what you use for my lighter flipping the pitch and stuff, as you saw in that video. I also kind of make some jokes. Um, Eric over at Legend of Wooly Swamp on Instagram talk about them a lot. Uh, you now we kind of bash each other back and forth. So. Kind of want you to see all that. And this rod here is an older Dobbins Champion series, and this is an 805 flip. Now this is an eight foot rod, and it's got a little more umph, you know what I'm saying? This is kind of like a broomstick. This is like, if you were to take mom's broomstick, cut off the broom part, 
throw a reel on it, this is what you'd be left with. This is what I'm flipping like three quarter to about an ounce and a quarter around that. You know, three quarter, one ounce, and an ounce and a quarter is about the heaviest I'll flip on this rod. This is set up with 65A32. It's a one ounce weight on it right now. And again, the custom SLP speed spool from Luz. It's an excellent reel. I pretty much have them on all my rods. Now this is a flip slash punch rod. It's built for both. So it can handle some really, really heavy stuff. It's also got the backbone of pull fish out of really, really heavy stuff. So that is an excellent setup for when I want to start getting into thicker stuff. A lot of mats, a lot of hyacinth mats, thicker lily pads, even thicker, thicker grass lines where this Kissimmee grass will start clumping up into big old mats. This thing right here will get that done. We'll be able to get a bait down to those fish and get those fish back towards the boat. Now I am going to BS with you. I don't do a lot of like heavy stuff as much as I should because I'm not that good at it. I'm talking from about ounce and a half to two ounces. Thick, heavy punching. Like, if you want to punch from, talking, if you want to punch through the engine block of my 7.3 power stroke out there, this is the rod you're going to bust it out with. This is actually an MHX 7.9. I think it's an 8 power. I don't know. Jake Hutchinson can comment on this video because he built this rod. But this is a legit punching rod. This thing is literally built and made for the heaviest stuff you find on your leg. You get the heaviest tungsten weight and the baddest little soft plastic crawl you can put on the back and just start punching and go into town. This rod right here means man stuff is about to be happening. It's got this big old handle built onto it, big old split grip handle, and it's weighed perfectly to be able to comfortably flip an ounce and a half to two ounce tungsten all day in that type of coverage. It's really hard to fish that type of cover, especially when you get hooked up. I don't do that type of fishing all the time. Um, that's a real big confidence type thing. It's kind of like me with drop shot. I'll drop shot, but it's not like, I need someone to kind of feed me some more guidance, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna go out and find fish on a drop shot, just like I'm not gonna go out and start finding fish in mats. Every mat I've ever seen, I'll flip and I'll pick it apart. But there's certain times where people are really efficient at knowing when those fish are gonna be up on those mats and ready to go and hit those fish. And sometimes it's just about staying and waiting on those fish. But nevertheless, as you can see, this rod is just put to the side here in my old fishing cabinet. And when I want to go out and do that type of fishing, I put an 8-3 to 1 loose speed spool on this thing and I start going to town. But it doesn't happen too much. Again, I am a learner on that heavier stuff. That's something I need to gain a lot more confidence in. As I said before, I don't do a lot, but come into, you know, early in the winter, just before spawn, those fish are, are up there about to do their thing. And feeding hardcore, that's when you can really get that type of fishing done. It's big on the Kissimmee River and it is huge down there in Okeechobee as well many other areas across the country but you know local areas like that people are are true hammers doing that and lastly last thing you need is a buff and some uv gloves i'm just kidding you don't need any of this crap man that's just laying in a box right there and i thought about it because that was the stuff i was wearing in that video that's really it man i have kind of everything organized into fall rates if that kind of makes sense so my 3 sixteenths to about we'll call it my half ounce tungstens i have that on my lighter fall rate so my lighter flipping rod from my three quarters to about an ounce and a quarter, I have that on my medium fall rate, as crazy as that sounds. That's just kind of my comfort zone with that rod, and that's what I like doing. I really like flipping with a three quarter ounce. That's where most of my confidence comes from. Most of the water I'm flipping is about two to four feet anyways. So it gets that three quarter right to the bottom real quick. I'm able to move it and can have a good feel the whole time that I'm using that size terminal tackle. And then I have my fast rates, which anything from an ounce and a quarter to two ounce. Uh, I honestly don't have anything heavier than a two ounce tungsten, so <laughs> that's all I have to offer. And again, that's kind of where I'm building my confidence. You know, I'm kind of ripped my ego apart because I'd like to be a better punch. I know there's tons of tons of big fish that I'm missing every year if I would just stick behind that punch rod and go to town. So expect to see that more. Other than that, guys, if you have any questions, be sure to comment below. Hit up the Instagram page, Bass All Year Fishing. And of course, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, stick around here for some more awesome bass fishing content. And until next video, get out there, stay safe. We'll see you out there on the water. Catch y'all. Appreciate it again.